Oh yeah, and then I wanted to end the show by touching upon the one year anniversary of Virgil Abloh's passing. Pretty crazy to think it's been a year already, man. One year since Virgil Abloh unfortunately passed away due to cancer. Um, obviously something that he kept private for the most part. I think unless you were a close family or friend, no one really knew about it. Um, which was quite good as well because it meant that no one was actually spreading rumors because he actually told his actual friends and family because I heard nothing about it whatsoever. Maybe if I was closer to the scene and stuff, I might have heard whispers. But from my really removed point of view, I heard absolutely zero about it, even on the forums and stuff. So it's pretty cool to see people were basically able to respect his wishes and keep that news to himself. And he was able to kind of battle that stuff in private and spend those kind of last few moments, you know, in some sort of relative peace with his family and whatnot. Um, unfortunately at that time which probably was a bit bittersweet it kind of made me think just in general about his last and legacy and I feel like when it first happened I remember I streamed about it and I was quite taken aback because it kind of came out of the blue obviously for most people myself included and I was weirdly affected by it which makes sense because obviously I had worked with the guy previously I was obviously a fan of his from the, for the minute from 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 day dot actually and um i kind of followed his entire journey i went to work for that company where i was doing where i helped to kind of co-produce the entire curriculum for this online streetwear program and i essentially went there because i've had a feeling that he might be the person leading the streetwear program and if i'm not mistaken i actually if i'm not mistaken i actually put what i do yeah i actually made the the initial sort of uh pitch that i had to present myself the kind of deck that i used was essentially me kind of having an idea on how a course led by Virgil Abloh would look like. I'm actually going to try and rummage through my documents and see if I can, on my inbox, see if I can kind of pull that PDF up and kind of share it and show you guys exactly what I was kind of going for in terms of um, what I kind of presented when I went to that company. And you can see some of the stuff that I was talking about back then. It's quite funny. I think I made it on like Photoshop or something, still PDF thing that I did, which was, um, which was handy because at the time it kind of allowed me to make that step of my career. But, I'm just reflecting on his legacy and I think when I made that original video I think one of the things I remember saying was that the thing that I will take as a lesson and something I'll kind of carry forward is definitely that relentless kind of just do it and make sure you ship and posting your work type of mentality that Virgil had I've not really done maybe the posting of your work thing but in terms of just continually putting out every idea that I have I've so far did it especially since the time that he's passed until now and I feel like that kind of energy that he kind of put out there into universe has allowed me to kind of take this pod that I do and the live streams I do and the other thing bits and bobs that I do to come out it's allowed me to kind of take that to the next level because I feel like for someone like him he was never too precious he never really seemed like somebody who was resting on his laurels or took his position as ever however lofty it might have been and took it for granted he definitely somebody that saw like in regards of his station he still treated it as if he was that intern that was kind of you know working on shoes at fendi with kanye back in the day he still saw it as him doing pdfs for you know doing pdf flyers sorry sketching up uh flyers on photoshop for his raves and stuff he saw it the same way even though he's working on that higher level so i feel like that was super inspiring to see and i think for myself you know being an older dude it was that inspiring and i can't imagine how inspiring it must have been for a kid being 16 and seeing this guy going from you know designing that initial off-white collection um and having asap mob sort of like modeling it and shit and then see him take that all the way to Louis Vuitton, the Nike collaboration, the IKEA stuff, everything else in between, the DJing, the touring, the activations, all this mad stuff, the bin trills, the you know, the the, the empowering of the denim tears, um, of the Heron Prestons and all this sort of stuff. It's been incredible to watch it in real time. Legitimately incredible. And the other thing that I think that's really kind of important to see also is that in the end, that kind of relentless need to always be creating and to always put his shit out has essentially put him in the position where his wife can continue on his legacy as there's a recent um, interview that she did with new york times shannon abloh bless you and it's absolutely incredible that i think in part of the article they say that they have a roadmap of things that he's done and projects they're going to release and whatnot for the next 50 years for the next 50 years that they have all that kind of content that he done so imagine what he would have been able to do if he was still around but he's been able to that kind of you know um way of thinking that way of approaching work 
has put himself in a position where he's able to provide for his family way 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 long past his death he's also been able to um supply people with inspiration for years and years and years and years to come it's legitimately incredible to see because we've already seen what the flipping basket family have been able to do with such a small and short period of john michelle basket's life they've been able to rinse and repeat and stretch that bad boy out you know for decades and decades and decades and virgil abler's been able to do that in real time but do it times 100 to the point where there's 50 years up and coming but who knows what might come in the next 50 which might add another 50 on top of it it's pretty incredible so for me that's the lasting legacy i'll take away from virgil is definitely just always be putting your ideas out there however silly however dumb they may be in your head put them out there especially if you're creative because there's one of the things that we all have is that block is that fear of shipping is that fear of showcasing is that fear of uploading that fear of printing that fear of you know ideating of drafting of prototyping of selling all those things people have a fear of and essentially the real kind of um the kind of the real bittersweet part of that is that if you don't ship if you don't showcase your art no one will know what you do and if no one knows what you do you won't have the ability to do other cooler things in the future like collaborations or work with people like you need to be able to put yourself out there in order for people to kind of want to use you and kind of tap into your resources it's kind of one of those kind of catch-22 situations so just put more work out there and obviously the other part as well is just the kindness factor of it like treating people well because i feel like in the last year like we already see what happened when kanye tried to talk ill of virgil's name tremaine came out bucked out the flamethrower and lit kanye up to the point where he's never addressed him in that way again right kanye essentially lit that boy up i mean tremaine lit kanye up exposed him for being a crappy friend essentially and it seems like everybody goes out of their way to really defend virgil's Le abelow's legacy and that goes to show that that kind of um is credit to his character it's credit to the man that he was that he's been you know he left such an um, oversized influence an oversized impression on people that they're defending him long after his past even you know like imagine someone like tremaine defending him um against somebody like a kanye who maybe you would say you know maybe has more right to say anything he wants about you know um his virgil than maybe tremaine does but i think that goes to speak to the character of this guy the strength of his character that someone like a tremaine will step up and be able to be like hey you know what now nah, you're not going to be saying that in virgil's name not in his name don't bring all your nonsense and attach his name to it you're not that guy and I feel like that's probably two of the things that a lot of people in the creative industry probably don't have. I feel like once you do put all your work out there, once you are successful, suddenly your personality changes. I think we've all seen it. We've all got our little people in our scenes, whether they're artists, whether they work in galleries, whether they work in showrooms, whether they own brands, whether they're stylists, whatever they are. We all know people who they got a little bit of fame, they got a little bit of a promotion, they got a little bit more of attention and suddenly they turned into dickheads. And I feel like if Virgil didn't turn into a dickhead, even though he was incredibly well known incredibly clouded up as the kids will say i feel like you with your little flipping you know community manager role in whatever dog shit brand that you're working in you have no right to suddenly feel like you're fucking kareem Reutfeld. you need to wind your neck in and chill if virgil was able to be decent and shake people's hands and look people in the eye when he's talking to them and give them actual handshakes none of that kind of loose loosey goosey fashion handshake shit then you should also do that look people in the eye have confidence treat people with respect you know be courteous um and just walk with grace and essentially even though you know he's no longer here his grace has lived on basically in everybody to the point where people are legitimately defending his honor against one of the biggest stars in the world and you know and he kind of won that banner of battle obviously it's not a winning or losing battle but you know what i mean so that is basically i feel like Virgil's legacy and like i said it's really heartbreaking to kind of think that it's been a year since that guy passed because you know number one the years go by so quickly and number two it's such a um gone too soon type of moment because he had so much more to give i feel like but you know the great thing about it especially when you're creative kind of similar to what they say about architects you know when you build these amazing buildings and you, you essentially it's like a way for you to kind of commemorate yourself so that your legacy and your self lives on where long past your death because these buildings stay out for you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years so with his products and with his ideation um all of those things will live on for many many years they're going to inspire many many kids generations to come and essentially you know he'll become a f un unfortunately the unfortunate part of life is that he'll end up being a far bigger star and influence dead than he was alive even though when he was alive he was doing the thing man he was doing the thing 
you think back to that period between like 2019 ish or maybe 2018 to 2021 or 20 no let's say 2018 to 2020 he was on fire bruv the projects god almighty i don't think you'll see a a more harder working dude in fashion ever uh, in my opinion especially in this modern era because i feel like people nowadays you know they um everyone's crying about fucking burnout and mental health and all that stuff but it's it seemed like he didn't ever you didn't hear him ever complain about his workload he embraced it he even bragged about it right like one one hour like you know two hours ago i was i was in flipping this location here i am in this location designing this location or that location like he he embraced the chaos of it all um in the same way that maybe Carl Lagerfeld would like to just you know be drowning in work and in flipping occup and in flipping appointments and whatnot and you know meetings and that kind of stuff he kind of embraced that side of it as well so maybe we won't see that ever again but still his legacy lives on so R.I.P. the great Virgil Abloh gone but never forgotten gone but never ever 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 forgotten <laughs>